Okay, hi everybody, it's Lauren Gates with Airway Health Solutions. I am here with John Nierman of the Nierman uh, Practice Management Group. Hey John, how are you today? I'm good, how are you? I'm good, you know, I'm so excited because I haven't done a lunch and learn in like ages, you know, and so it's uh, it's really cool to be here with you in the middle of the afternoon. Um, we have uh, um, eight people on board right now, but we have others who registered for the recording later. I know medical billing is really popular. It's a hot topic. You know, it doesn't sound overly exciting from the get go, but it can be once you start to really learn about the why and then actually the reimbursement so you can get more patients on board. So thank you for being with us today. I'm excited to learn more about what you guys are up to. I'm thrilled with our new partnership that we just launched um, uh, last month. It was October. So it just seemed like a natural fit because everyone, you know, is asking about, you know, medical reimbursement. How do we do it? What's the easiest way? What are the hurdles? And what better way to just steer them over to you guys who've been doing this? I don't know. How long have you been doing this? Maybe you can tell us a little bit about your group. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we're really excited to, to be here and for our new partnership. So, um, yeah, couldn't be happier to to be presenting on this lunch and learn with you today. And um, yeah, before I go into that, I, I have a, a quote that I love um, regarding medical billing, and that is, you know, it's no longer just a nicety. It's going to be a necessity in dentistry. I like that. <laughs> right. That's a good one, right? Because Yeah, I do. I like that a lot. <laughs> And, and the reason why is because it is um, such a win-win to add on to a practice, you know, to add value to um, the practice and the services that, that you're providing and can really help the patients, um, you know, either move forward with treatment or lower their total costs. And um, there's a lot of really great benefits that we'll, we'll get into. But um, at Nearman Practice okay. Management, what we do is we make it easier for practices to implement billing so it doesn't have to be stressful or, you know, a, a headache or something to be afraid of. Um, it's something to add value and something that, you know, can just be a, a total benefit for the practice and, and the patients. And uh, we've been in business actually for 34 years. So wow, a long time. I know I, I, I'm actually a child prodigy. I started young when I was a baby. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, so my mother, Rose Nierman, she started the company and she was a, uh, a hygienist actually working in a, in a, um, one of the premier TMJ practices in South Florida. And she was actually tasked with doing the medical billing for those patients back then. They were kind of ahead of the curve and um, adding that on, they were having a lot of success. And from she, she wrote a manual and she um, hired a developer and created a software program way back when in, in 1991, I believe. And the software and just the, our whole protocol is all about having systems in place that's going to provide the documentation and the codes that you need to maximize medical reimbursement in dentistry. So Wonderful. yeah, it's, it's all about well, the systems and, and the education and the why. I know, I know. I love that you're big on the why, because that's really how I started my company. <laughs> Solutions is why are all these people having trouble? Why is OSA such an epidemic? Um, and, and then the how part, how can we prevent this? And then also how can we make it easier for our patients to get reimbursed? So I always like to start out with just a quick poll to see who's joining us. I, I recognize um, many of the names here, but I'm just gonna go ahead and launch a poll just to see uh, what professions are with us today if we have a mix of dentists, office managers, um, dental assistants, hygienists, go ahead and um, take the poll there. We can see who we have today. And you can see that too, John, right? Yeah, that's great. So we have four of 10, um, maybe it should pop up right on your screen. If you could just take a moment and just tell us your profession, it really helps us a little bit. And also feel free, um, John, are you okay with getting interrupted with questions or do you prefer that to, to the end? Yeah, no, please. I love interaction, engagement, so. Okay, yeah, let's just do wanted it. to make sure. All right, well, we kind of have a mixed bag here of mostly dentists and then an even split with office manager, hygienist and dental assistant. So thank you all for um, taking that poll. And then there, here's their, the results so you can see. 
Perfect. And then the second question is, are you currently billing for medical reimbursement? And we have 100% saying no. So what an opportunity here for everybody to learn more. And hopefully, again, the company, our company is called Airway Health Solutions. So I want to provide solutions for um, our clients. So um, I'm excited for this opportunity. I also just wanted to give some housekeeping notes that in order to receive the CE, you do have to stay on to the end of the presentation where we'll be giving a code. And you also, if you're on Facebook, um, you will need to register for the course to get the uh, CE because we send it through our Zoom registration link. All right, so that's the boring stuff, John. Let's get to the good stuff. And why don't you kick us off so we can all uh, have lunch and learn. Awesome, well, that sounds great. and. You know, like we said, it all begins with the why. So I, I'm I'm really excited. This is a a, a good a good group where um, everyone's not really doing medical billing yet. So I'm going to be really going into that element first, and it all revolves around that. You know, the why. Um, so let's talk about that. You know, with medical billing in dentistry, um, as I mentioned at the beginning, there are some really great benefits. And I'll just go through a couple of key ones, one by one. So first off, you know, um, it's, a, it's another tool that you can use that is going to help save the dental benefits. So um, a lot of our practices, they're utilizing both the medical and the dental, depending on what's going to pick up what, so that you can really save those dental benefits for um, the treatments that are strictly dental. And so you can really maximize um, both. And, and that's a, a great way to you know, get the patients to come back, make sure they're, they're using all their dental and saving um, some other procedures that medical could pick up. So when it comes to that as well, you know, as we all know, there are many limits to dental insurance coverage. There's frequency limits, um, the, the total um, reimbursement's not gonna be that high for the year. So when it comes to medical, it's not as capped. You know, there's a lot more coverage. Um, when, it, when there is coverage, it's typically going to pay higher. Um, and there's no frequency limits for exams and, and x-rays and such. So, um, <laughs> and I'm sure some of you might have been seeing this happening as well with dental insurance. Um, where they'll actually deny a dental insurance claim saying, this might be medical, we want you to submit to medical first before the dental is going to pick it up. So again, that's where it really comes into, um, it's not just a nice, nicety anymore, it, the dental insurers are actually um, requiring it too for certain procedures. So, um, you know, let, we can get into a little bit um, some examples here. Um, here's a here's a sample EOB of a dental insurer saying, you know, to bill medical first. Um, as you can see in the highlighted sentence here, you know, we're not making this stuff up. Um, it, th these are actual dental EOBs that are saying, please submit this claim to your medical carrier first for consideration. Um, so we are seeing that more often when we do polls with our uh, attendees at our medical billing seminars, almost everybody raises their hand that they've seen this. They're starting to see this more and more. Okay. <laughs> I love this slide. Uh, our motto is get your ducks in a row, by the way. So if you start seeing ducks throughout the presentation, that's why we have kind of a crazy obsession with them. Um, and it's all fun, but that's really the name of the game with medical billing and, and with uh, airway and sleep is because it's different, you know, it's so important to, to have your ducks in a row. And we'll, we'll talk about that further. But one of the other benefits with medical billing is it's going to help you stand out from other practices. So, you know, differentiating your practice and increasing case acceptance. Um, but one of the, the things that we're also seeing is we're actually hearing from patients themselves. Um, they're Googling these keywords and they're finding our company and asking um, if we know a dentist that can help get them covered for maybe you know oral surgeries or um, sleep apnea or TMJ. And we're seeing that more and more. And we have to tell the patients that um, you know, 
we we don't you know help you directly, but we can you know send you certainly send you to uh, one of our clients that um, does offer medical reimbursement. So we are really starting to see those patients are kind of shopping around and might be making decisions based on who's who's billing medical or not. And we're really seeing that you know with the sleep apnea, um, the adult oral appliances for sure, because that's so mainstream and common for reimbursement. But we're starting to see that with other procedures too, like oral surgeries and, and bone grafts and implants. So um, we're only going to be seeing more of that. And that's why um, it's definitely such a, a key thing to really start thinking about. And the other thing is um, it's going to help with um, physician referral building too, you know, physicians want to see that you're going to, you know, help the patient as much as possible with out-of-pocket costs, and um, that's another thing that we're seeing is physicians they want to refer to a, a dentist that's going to build medical, especially for those adult um, appliances. So, um, and then you know, finally, help patients receive the needed treatment. So that's going to help you increase case acceptance and. A lot of those cases that maybe they didn't move forward and it, and it could have been a financial reason, um, a lot of practices that started me billing medical, they'll call those patients back and say, hey, you know, we just started implementing reimbursement. We can actually call your uh, medical insurance and, and do a verification of benefits to see what coverage you could potentially have. And if it looks good, then we can, you know, do a pre-authorization and um, get get some of these uh, costs covered by your, by your insurance. So definitely another really great benefit. And um, so that's the why. <laughs> now let's talk about the when. Um, so when to bill medical. So I love this acronym that we have here. It's called PAID. And um, what that stands for is PAID, pain, accidents, infection, and dysfunction. And these are just, you know, it's just a nice reference for what is considered medically necessary according to the medical insurance policies. Um, and that's really what it comes down to. When the cases are medically necessary, that's where the coverage can pick up for um, from their, their medical policies. And to determine medical necessity, typically in those policies, it all revolves around pain. Um, accident cases, of course, those are all also getting, you know, picked up a lot, um, infection and dysfunction. So it all revolves around sh showing your case of medical necessity and mapping these conditions and symptoms to the medical diagnosis codes, which we'll touch on. So medical necessity, that's the key. <laughs> that's what's going to get coverage. Um, and how do we really build that case of medical necessity is through our SOAP notes. Um, and so your SOAP reports, your SOAP notes, that's what's going to um, be your format of documentation that you can just standardize. And every time you can um, just build those sections to show each area uh, of medical necessity. So you have your subjective section, that's the patient conditions and symptoms. You have your objective findings, that's your exam findings. And then you have your assessment, that would be the diagnosis codes. Um, and then the plan, what's, what are the procedures, what is the treatment plan, and the next steps. And that all comes together as your SOAP note. And what I love about these SOAP notes is not only are they utilized for the, to show your documentation of medical necessity, but they're also used for correspondence with the other healthcare professionals of the patient. So you can start um, communicating back. You know, if you get a referral, um, let's say for a sleep case and you send them back the SOAP report um, of what happened during that visit, they're going to feel uh, a lot more comfortable and send more patients to you. And it's just one of the best ways to really build those networks too. So you're, you're really killing two birds with one stone by having a SOAP report for every visit. Um, and let's talk about what procedures are commonly built to medical. So, um, you know, we have our paid, our paid acronym. That's really when it's going to pick up. And the procedures that if it does qualify, you know, under 
those that level of um, conditions and symptoms, it, we have a list here. So you know the sleep apnea adult appliances that has coverage across the board. Um, we're seeing really really good percentage um, reimbursement in the um, the private insurers and with Medicare too. Um, and then oral surgeries, you know, we're seeing a lot of um, bone grafts, um, cysts or tumor removals, surgical extractions, um, infant phrenectomies. That's actually another really good one um, that has a very high frequency of reimbursement. Mucositis treatment, biopsies, sedation, accidents, uh, Botox for um, painful bruxism, we're actually seeing as well. And so, these are the most commonly billed procedures, but there are others as well. And we are seeing some expansion um, um, in functional, func functional appliances to just starting to, to get coverage. We're seeing a couple policies um, that have some, some good coverage there, which I'll show you later, but it's not quite across the board as the adult sleep apnea appliances are. But we're, we're hoping. And there's a question. They, there's a question. Hi, Dr. Kashefi. I'm glad you're with us. His question is Will they cover for upper airway resistance? And if they are, are not diagnosed by ENT having sleep apnea, so do they need, do they need a sleep apnea diagnosis? Uh, yes. So, um, in order for sleep apnea appliances to be covered, you do need um, that sleep apnea diagnosis from a sleep physician. And um, we'll talk about that. Uh, and I'll also, we'll talk about UARS too, because that's, um, <laughs> that's something that um, we're also just not quite seeing um, where if they don't have an AHI of um, five or greater, um, then a lot of policies will will not cover it, even if you know they have a, hard, a higher RDI. So we'll, we'll talk about that. There's a couple of nuances there. Thank you. If you see me pop up, that means I have a question <laughs> okay. on the chat, okay? Perfect. All right, yeah, feel free, just chime in. Um, all right, so tip number one, I love these tips. We have so many sayings at Yearman Practice Management. Um, it really helps for it to just keep things um, organize and, and, and have everyone remember the key uh, tips here. So our first tip is it's what you do up front that counts. I love this one um, because it's so true for medical billing. And I mentioned this earlier. So, you know, that first step is always to do a benefit verification. You know, before we go into anything with this patient, let's just get a lay of the land of what their medical insurance coverage looks like. And the way that we do that is through a medical benefit verification. We, we like to call the medical insurance company because that's where we're going to make sure we ask the right questions and get all the information. Um, you can do some of these checks online, but it might not be fully accurate, or you might be missing some information that could make or break um, some of these claims. So we like to call and um, verify the benefits. And then we're gonna have a really good idea of you know, their deductibles um, and what coverage they have for the specific codes that we're looking to provide. Then um, that the next step, or this is really done first, is um, sending a, the patient a dedicated questionnaire that's going to, um, well, if you do it, we have online questionnaires as part of our our solutions. Um, if you send them this questionnaire up front, you can gather their medical insurance information. They can upload a med their medical ID cards. And we're, what we're, we want to know up front is their chief complaints um, and start building that subjective part of our documentation. So the uh, history of symptoms, their conditions, and chief complaints. And if, if it's for sleep, there's a couple key um, items that we want to know, you know, have they been diagnosed with sleep apnea yet or not? That's really important. Um, and then the Epworth sleepiness scale, we want to have the patient fill that out so we can show that they do have excessive daytime sleepiness, which is, um, you know, we're just checking off some of the boxes that a lot of these medical insurance policies um, have as their requirements. So 
It's what you do up front that counts. We're gathering what we know the insurance is going to need um, before they you know, deny a claim and, and say, well, you're missing something. And that's just, that's across the board. You know, we, we want to always have more versus less documentation up front. All right. Um, so, you know, again, with the benefit verifications, um, it just really creates a clear pathway for that next step. And so you can have a very systematic approach starting with that step. Why is the patient questionnaire so important? I talked about this, you know, it proves the patient meets coverage criteria. And um, the information collected, you know, if there is a pre-authorization needed, um, now we already have that, that documentation that it's not gonna delay gathering that for that next step, which could potentially be a pre-authorization. Okay. Um, I like to show some of these policies because it really kind of maps it to uh, the real world here. And so here's, um, here's an example of a, a Cygnus policy for oral appliance uh, indication. So, you know, again, yeah, as we, you know, we want to check off all the, uh, the boxes here. So if you see in this policy, it says um, that when, when all the following criteria are met, um, so they have to have a um, diagnosis of sleep apnea on a covered sleep study um, that is um, uh, an eight. Now, this is this is nice. Uh, it, this one does have an a AHI or RDI. Um, so that's good. So, you know, the um, the RERAs are part of that. And um, if it's moderate sleep apnea, then they also need to have documentation of excessive daytime sleepiness or hypertension um, history of stroke. So that's why you know we want to be gathering that information up front. The Epworth sleepiness scale is what documents excessive daytime sleepiness, and we want to capture their medical history as well to see if they do have a history of um, you know heart disease or hypertension or stroke. Okay. So tip number two, uh, documentation, documentation, documentation. You've heard of location, location, location. When it comes to medical billing, it's all about documentation. Uh, another one of our sayings, if it's not documented, it didn't happen. And uh, we like to use that SOAP note format. That's the standard. And it just makes it very systematic to do that every time. You know you're not going to be missing anything. All right, so talked about this a little bit, but what documentation is needed? Um, so just in general, you know, medical insurance card, we wanna verify their information is correct. Patient questionnaire and their medical history, asking the right questions in those questionnaires. And then the exam, the evaluation findings um, and what that assessment and diagnosis is. So. With sleep apnea, that diagnosis has to come from a sleep physician, but other dental services, the diagnosis can come from the dentist themselves. So depending on what, what treatment it is, um, that's how you're going to um, get your diagnosis, either from the dentist or another physician. And uh, the documentation of the treatment plan itself and some some services and procedures require um, other documentation, such as a copy of the sleep study. All right, so speaking of sleep appliances and, and sleep, so we, we will need that sleep study. We wanna have that on hand for the insurance. And the other thing that they wanna see is that there's a prescription from a treating physician. Now this can be a different physician from the diagnosed the diagnosing sleep physician, um, but we do need this Rx, this written order um, for an oral appliance. And there's multiple ways to go about getting this and um, it ends up really not becoming much of an issue at all to, to make sure we have that. And then lastly, we wanna have a proof of delivery uh, form signed by the patient that the appliance was delivered. So really not too much documentation there for sleep. And again, you know, having just a, a systematic approach to this where you're just checking it off that we have that just makes it very streamlined and stress-free. And we can talk about that later. That's what we help with. 
All right, so I'm just going to skip ahead a little bit. Talked about this, but this is another one of our sayings. If you remember nothing else, I, I hope you just remember one of these one of these sayings here. Um, this one is mine. A lot of the ones are roses that she created, but I like to call the soap reports as your golden ticket to medical reimbursement. You know that can make or break your claim. And um, you know we talked about the importance of those talked about what it means. So I, I don't have to go too much in, in here, but just to show you some visuals of what that ends up looking like. Um, and so we've highlighted, you know, here's that Epworth um, score. So over 10 is what's going to show excessive daytime sleepiness, but we're also showing um, those additional symptoms and conditions here as well. And then that medical history of high blood pressure and hypertension. If they tried CPAP before, that's also really good to um, document in the subjective findings. The objective findings, that's going to document your exam. Um, and so, you know, your airway or your sleep exam can just, those key findings can just be documented in the objective section there. The assessment, this is going to, all we really need for a sleep uh, SOAP report here is just the diagnosis. And so um, if you want to write this down, there's only one sleep apnea, obstructive sleep apnea diagnosis code. So it keeps it very simple. And that is ICD. That's an ICD-10 code, uh, which is the diagnosis code. And it's G47.33. Okay, so that's a requirement for those sleep appliances uh, to get paid. They have to have that diagnosis from a sleep physician and that's what we want to document in the assessment. And finally, the plan, um, which is going to tie in with what the procedures are and those procedure codes um, that we want to bill for. So the plan in, you know, in a, this example of an adult um, oral appliance for sleep would be um, for, for the device and then what the next steps um, of that plan are. All right, so tip number three, know the codes. And for sleep apnea, there's really not that many, keeps it simple. So you have your ICD codes, that's your diagnosis. And then you have your CPT codes, that's your procedure. Um, there's also a, another one called HICPIX, which is very similar to a procedure code. I like to just keep it simple and kind of group the CPT and the HICPIX codes together as your, as your procedures. That's what you're getting paid for. Okay. <laughs> Another one of our sayings. This is our most famous one. There's Rose. Um, and this one is, there's a code for that. So when it comes to medical billing, um, it's all about the coding and the documentation. So for the codes themselves, here's our obstructive sleep apnea diagnosis code again. Now let's talk about the, um, the code for the appliance themselves, what are you going to get paid on? So for, for the sleep apnea appliances, there's the main code that we're going to be utilizing is E0486. And this is the code for a, an oral device uh, used to reduce upper airway collapsibility, it's custom fitted, and uh, includes 90 days of follow-up care. And a lot of times, we're going to want to use a modifier. I'm not going to get into modifiers on this um, talk, but it's just something that adds a little more detail to a procedure code. And in this case, a lot of the insurance companies, they like to use this NU modifier. So it ends up being E04486-NU. All right. Um, I want to talk a little bit about phrenectomies too on this call. And Again, what we're seeing is some really good coverage across the board um, for infant phrenectomies, especially. So as you can see, I love showing these policies to really tie it, tie it in with some real world examples here. And as you can see here, um, you know, there's that medically necessary terminology. Um, and here we have newborn feeding difficulties or childhood articulation problems exist. So that's how 
that's how it ties in with the medical necessity. Now, our objective at this point is to show that uh, medical necessity with our documentation and our diagnosis codes. John, is there a medical code for lasers for soft palate treatment? Yes. Um, so not lasers specifically, but there is um, soft, soft palate um, treatment. And so the, the laser itself, the codes aren't really for lasers. It's more about the, um, what the procedure itself was. And I think I have a slide on, on that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so when it comes to you know, showing the, the, the um, medical necessity with the phrenectomies, we have some really good ICD-10 codes. And um, I think everyone will be getting the recording of this that's on. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail on here. Just what you, you want to know is just the concepts right now. Um, but we do have some really great ICD-10 codes for um, the, the phrenectomies and you can use more than one. And so as you use multiple ones, that's how you're really painting the picture of this specific case. All right, so here's our procedure codes um, now. And so there's, um, there's four main ones that, that we you know, commonly use here. And um, again, don't wanna go into too much detail because I still have a lot I wanna cover, but just the concepts of you have your diagnosis codes, that's gonna paint the picture. And then you have your procedure codes, that's what you're, you're providing and that's what you're um, billing out for. Okay, we have a nice flow chart here as well um, that kind of talks about those codes um, and what those next steps would be. Um, so you wanna verify those benefits and then if everything looks good, then you wanna document that and submit your medical claim. All right, lastly, what I wanna talk about is just staying up to date. You know, there's, there's a lot of changes in medical billing that happen frequently. And that's why, um, you know, working with a company like us can really make the difference when you're getting into medical billing, because this is what we do. You know, we specialize in medical billing specifically for the dental services. Um, so we're always on the cutting edge of what's going on. And we really work hand in hand, work very closely with our clients and team members to make sure that everything is accurate, up to date, and you have your ducks in a row. So a lot of coding updates um, recently. And so the codes themselves, they change over time. Um, they add new codes. And uh, again, you know, we're always um, just informing you and, and updating our software as well, making sure that everything is, is up to date. Um, here's an example of a, a coding change recently in the last year or so. So um, when, you're, when you're doing these types of procedures, you know, TMJ or oral surgeries or sleep or airway, you can bill for the exam and evaluation itself. And so they changed the guidelines now where uh, it used to be um, time and also what the uh, detailed, um, showing a you know, detailed kind of a checklist of what was um, covered. And they've kind of gotten rid of that. And now it's all really just based on time itself. So now it's a lot more simplified to select the appropriate exam code, because if you spent 30 minutes, that's going to be a level two exam code now. So, or level three, sorry. So that makes it really easy. And again, you know, we're keeping you up to date on these changes uh, as well. So um, here's another you know, update um, since COVID, there's been a lot of, you know, a big increase in telemedicine. And so there's some um, 2020 CPT telemedicine codes that a lot of our practices are using. And many commercial carriers um, will pay the same that you would uh, for a face-to-face -face appointment with these telemedicine codes. All right, um, and you can review, you can research the, the medical policies on their websites. And that's something that we do too, if you're working with us. And um, so it is pretty transparent. You just have to do a little bit of digging on what's going on with uh, those policies. 
All right, real brief, just want to talk about um, the medical coverage for pediatric ortho. So we have seen a couple policies that do have coverage. And again, we're really hoping to see this become more standardized across the um, landscape here. But here's the example of, of the Aetna's policy. Um, you know, comprehensive medically necessary orthodontic services are covered for members who have a severe handicapping malocclusion related to a medical condition. So um, cleft palate or other congenital cranial facial, prudental facial malformations requiring reconstructive surgical correction in addition to orthodontic services. Um, so this is this is good. And then this this la uh, actually the all of these uh, bullet points are really good. Um, skeletal anomaly involving maxillary or mandibular structures. That's you know really what what it is that um, you know. So we're, we're seeing some some good coverage there. A new policy for childhood OSA. Um, so essentially, you know, insurer considers oral appliances or functional orthopedic appliances medically necessary in the treatment of children with craniofacial anomalies with signs and symptoms of OSA. So we're hoping to see more of that, but it is already in several policies in insurance companies. All right. Um, our, and I'm just going to interrupt you with one question based on yeah. um, some of these concepts is what about speech language pathology or myofunctional therapy, which helps 50% of adults with OSA? Yeah, so um, we're, we're seeing some of that as well, um, you know, especially your know, speech language uh, pathology um, that that's getting some coverage there. Um, the, the myofunctional therapy Again, you know, it's just, it's not quite there yet, um, kind of on its own, but uh, we are starting to see more and more research coming out, which is, I think, going to be, make the difference um, so over time. So, so it, it looks good, but it's just, uh, with insurance, it just does take, take time. Um, sometimes they'll say it's, it's experimental um, until more and more research comes out where they can't say that anymore. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so yeah, lastly, you know, just having a, a nice clean claim with all the boxes filled out appropriately. And, uh, you know, once you know the, the key things about the medical claim, it can become uh, very systematic as well. And that's also something that, you know, our dental writer software does. It, it generates your documentation and your medical claims for you. It fills out all the boxes, all the modifiers for you so that it is just very systematic. And that can really just make things a lot more streamlined, um, especially for practices that are just getting started. So speaking of Dental Writer Plus, that's our um, software. It's cloud-based now. And it we like to refer to it as a four-step process where it patient fills out the online questionnaire. Then you document the exam inside a dental writer and from those two forms, it's going to build your SOAP report. It has all the subjective, objective assessment and plan information to show your medical, uh, medical necessity. And it's going to build your medical claim. And you can send that out electronically or use Nierman Medical Billing Service to take it from there and do all of the other insurance aspects, such as the benefit verifications and, and the follow-up. So uh, this is... This is a, a great um, testimonial received from Dr. Levy, um, and uh, he's been a longtime client of us, and he he let us know, you know, getting involved with, with dental sleep medicine and using Dental Writer were two of the best practices decisions I've ever made, and um, we'd love to hear that, and that's our whole mission is to help practices make it easier and remove those barriers of getting into sleep and airway um, and pediatric and other services that a lot of those hurdles do end up being the medical reimbursement. So that's our, our main um, topic today that I wanted to share with you all, really just touch the surface and go over the why, the when, and the how. And here's our contact information. Um, 
we are really big on education, the systems, and the support for medical billing to make it easy. So you can always um, you know, check out a demo of our dental writer software and our medical billing service. We have medical billing courses that you can attend in person or live stream. We have online courses too. And we do other sorts of um, services as well related to medical billing. So, and we have some great um, specials related to um, with our new partnership with Airway Health Solutions. So um, that's something that I'm also really excited about because um, you know, we we know you know, we work with so many great practices and we want to make it more accessible for you all to get into medical billing. So um we have, uh, and we'll send this in a, a follow-up to you all, but uh, we have a code of AHS23 that gets you uh, essentially a $1,000 credit um, towards dental writer and medical billing service or um, one of our uh, medical billing courses with dental writer. So we can uh, send a follow-up okay, just... on all of that. Yeah, and I just put that in the chat. So thank okay. you so much. Um, I, I don't know if there are any other questions. You can um, put it in the Q&A box, but this was very informative. I know it's just, we're just scratching the surface here, but it's so intriguing to learn, you know, especially um, the audience here, they really haven't been doing any medical billing. So I know we have a mutual faculty member, Dr. Michael Gelb, who um, is, is loving the reimbursement <laughs> that he's getting. He can't imagine not having this as part of his practice. So um, I feel like it's a win-win for everybody. And um, I think everyone has your contact information here. You can take a screenshot of that. We will oh. do a follow-up email uh, as well. But John, why don't you let me um, share the screen in this way? I can also share our upcoming courses. If you're interested in starting in airway and um, sleep, we can kind of let you know what's going on in our neck of the woods here. Because it's so funny how we just really kind of belong together here <laughs> because here we are, you know, for those who want to get interested in sleep and airway, we have these mini residencies that teach you the technique um, to do so. And then what better way to really implement this in your practice than to have the, the reimbursement as well. So we're really um, stoked about that. Yeah. So our, we actually have a course tomorrow. We do have a couple of openings up for Dr. Moralia's mini residency where he will teach the adult portion on um, adult experience expansion, removable expanders, clear line of therapy, and he actually touches on TMD. I was, I'm so glad you brought up the pediatric ortho because we do have um, special courses uh, with Dr. Kevin Boyd. These are all technique courses teaching you how they have done this uh, over decades and, and really successfully help children. Um, Dr. Boyd will specifically focus on children under 72 months um, of age. And we'll be in your neck of the woods, John, not too far in Pompano okay. Beach, um, January 27th, 28th. So maybe you guys want to come down, but we also have it available live streaming. Uh, and then we also have advanced courses with Dr. Moralia to teach fixed expansion, in older children, teens, and also his bracket and wiring techniques using the carrier uh, system. So you can actually use bracket and wires for an expansion technique, not a retraction technique. So that's 100% virtual. That is March 3rd and March 4th. And this is probably the, the conduit between us two is because this is a course that you can get direct reimbursement from medically. I mean, I, I'm confident in saying that. Would you agree, John, knowing Dr. Gell well and, oh, yeah. and what he teaches? <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So if, if you really want to add, you know, TMD, um, we think of it as the prequel to, to airway and ortho. Um, this is a no brainer for medical billing reimbursement to add a new chapter in your practice and really differentiate yourself and your community because I don't know about you guys, but whenever I go to a party, everyone's always talking about their jaw clicking something. TMJ is like a, a hot topic, almost as hot as uh, CPAPs, right? So if you're ever at a party, you don't know what to talk about, bring up TMJ and, uh, TMJ and CPAPs and you'll have a, a ro roaring conversation. So that's going to be virtual March 31st. It's a full day um, course as well. 
And then we also have Dr. Brett Christensen, who is an orthodontist who's been silently doing this, almost like the soldier who works alone for 30 years. And he was so happy to find there's a whole community of other like-minded professionals doing expansive orthodontics. And um, he will teach you his techniques but this is geared towards um, orthodontists, but general dentists and pediatric dentists are welcome as well. I know this year, John, you won't be joining us for the Airway Palooza because you have your mini residency going on at the same time, but um, we hope that if you're interested, you'll come and join us in Savannah. We have James Nestor, our keynote speaker um, as well, and I'm sure everyone knows uh, all these faces uh, at some level, at some point in Airway. And we're just really excited. Next year, John, we'll have to make sure we coordinate our dates better so we can all have a big celebration there. Um, and then we also have our airway aligners. So it's really, um, once you take our adult course, you're eligible to use our airway aligners. We program the algorithms into the software so you don't have have to worry about hidden retraction. There's no IPR. We do have it if needed for black triangles, but um, we really ensure you having an expansive case that Dr. Moralia uses his try and true um, algorithms to, out, to make sure you have an expansive outcome. Please join our Airway Health Meetup Facebook group. We always share great ideas. John, I hope you become part of that as well. So I'd love your um, input. Um, we always get questions on medical billing. Uh, that's a public group, so we hope you join that. And then also we have an upcoming Airway Health Solutions conversation, January 18th with Dr. Gelb. This is also free. We don't offer CE, but you have a lot of um, insights from really top experts. So we look forward to um, Dr. Gelb. And uh, if you want to get your CE, once we conclude this uh, webinar, your, a survey will pop up on your browser just to fill out. And the code for today is AHS Billing or check your email for the survey. If you don't see it pop up on your browser, which it should, it tells me it should, um, you will get that in your, as an email format, the code is AHS billing. And thanks John on um, Nearman Practice Management for giving us the CE today. Whereas again, we're thrilled to have you in this partnership. It's a win-win situation for all parties involved. You're the missing piece to so many things. And I really hope that this improves patient acceptance, because really, um, if we can help more people breathe, sleep, and thrive as founders of companies and presidents of company, I, I know Rose is on, on the call too, um, that really just gives us such great joy for the work that we do is to really make it more accessible for everyone. So why don't you close this out, John, with any um, closing notes or, um, again, uh, anything that you can offer if someone wants to take the next steps? Yeah, absolutely. And thank you again. It's been an absolute pleasure to be on with you today for our Lunch and Learn. And I just want to say just to one more thing about the Dental Writer software and what our clients are really benefiting from using the systems is in addition to the billing, it really is that referral uh, building and that correspondence with the other providers. It's one of the best ways to really build your network of other healthcare professionals and those like-minded, you know, airway professionals. Um, so that's what, that's really one of the secrets to practice growth in these areas is that correspondence and dental writer makes that streamlined too. So even if you don't feel quite ready to dive into the medical billing, um, our clients are gaining so much value out of that aspect alone that it's, um, it's really a, a great place to, to get started um, no matter whether you're ready for billing or not. Uh, so either way, reach out to us, um, see a demo, have a conversation with us. We'd love to see if uh, it'd be a great fit and, and partnership to help you grow your airway practice. And um, we'll send up that follow-up information with all those details. So again, thanks again. And uh, we look forward to seeing you all next time. Great, John. Thank you for your time. And thanks, everyone, for hopping on with us today. It was a, a great first lunch to learn. We'll do more of these. Okay. Thanks again. Awesome. Take care, everyone. Thanks, everyone.